Today we will be dealing with a very interesting topic in linguistics called morphosyntactic alignment. Now, forget all of that. Forget all the complications. Just look at the screen and look at the two sentences: "I slept" versus "I saw the cat." What are the differences? It's very, very simple. In "I slept," you have basically the word "I" and "slept," so two parts in the sentence. "I saw the cat" has three parts: "I," the person doing the action, "saw," which is the verb, and then the cat, which is the object, the person or the thing that's receiving your action, the thing that's being seen. Pretty much that's it. So if you look here, I saw the cat. The three parts. You have the verb in the middle, saw. Right. That's the action. You have the subject, I, doing something to the cat. So the action moves across, basically across the verb to the object, to the cat. I saw the cat. And so the magic word here is across. And let's just think about it. What is the Latin word for across? Well, we use it every day, right? So don't don't worry; it's not complicated at all. If you look at a map of the world, if you're going across the world from Europe to the Americas, what kind of flight is it? Like this. What would you call this flight from Europe to, say, North America? This is a transatlantic flight. So the word here is trans across the Atlantic, and you see this as well. For example, in the map of Romania,、um, there's a region called Transylvania, which literally means. Across or beyond the forests in medieval Latin, so that's it. So that across or beyond is trans or trans, and you see this as well. If you're transitioning, if you're changing from one stage in life to another, you're going across from one, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, status level to another. That's a transition. So trans as well. So because of this, this type of sentence where there is a verb in the middle and there are two two objects across the verb from each other, I. Do blah 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 the cat. This day is called basically. So you see the two th- objects here. Transitive. That's it. And that's how you remember it. Pretty simple actually. Not too difficult, I think. And therefore, what about what's the opposite of this? In a sentence like I slept, since I saw the cat is transitive, what is I slept? Well, pretty easy. It's not transitive. And then if you look at this, if a person is not decent, he or she, he in this case, is indecent. If the food is not edible, it's inedible, right? So if it's something that is insufficient, like you don't have enough money, it's insufficient. So something that is not transitive is intransitive. Simple, all right? So that's lesson number one. So intransitive and transitive. A transitive sentence always has a verb and two things on either side. Firstly, someone doing something and something receiving something. This is in English, of course. The intransitive only has someone doing something and the action that is done, and that's it. All right, so so that's how you remember it. Simple. All right. Now we're going to look at morphological syntactic alignment, and these will be a little bit more complicated. Now, if we look at this here, a sentence like this: "I slept." Right. Versus "I saw the cat." The "I," sorry, one is intransitive, one is transitive. The "I" here is in "I slept" is the subject. I am doing something. Right. The same thing. This is in English, of course. So the same thing with "I saw the cat." I here is the agent, the one that's doing something to the cat, which is the patient, the receiver of the action. All right. So this is the English structure. In a language like Basque, things are a bit reverse. It looks more like this. So in Basque, when you say, so look at transitive, intransitive sentence, like Martin fell, Martin erotenda, Martin falls. Sorry, present tense. The word Martin, the name Martin, is the subject. All right. Now, what? How about if I say something like this? If I were to say Martin sees, sorry, Maria sees Martin. In Basque, there is a little bit of extra thing here. You see, Maria becomes the、uh, the agent of the of the sentence. Martin receives the action, but Maria, sorry, I'm going to go back again. Maria has a K in it. Mariak, Mariak, ikustendo Martin. So this is interesting case because the Maria who is doing the action has a K at the end, Mariak. Why is that? Well, that's what we come to the ergative case, and we're going to talk a lot about this because the languages we'll be discussing in the next few, over the next few、um, videos, next few clips, will all be ergative languages. Yay! A lot of fun. So well, let's take a look as well.、Um, in a sentence like this, where I slept, I saw the cat. In in both cases, the subject I, as well as the agent of the transitive verb. 
I saw the cat is always the same, and that's called a nominative accusative language. So a nominative accusative alignment is found in English, French, Arabic, for example. All these sentences, I slept and I saw the cat. The I and the I are the same. In transitive and transitive, this is how it looks. However, so you're the same. Now, if we go to a language like Basque, however, it's different. It's that the subject of this of an intransitive sentence, like I sleep, I fall, I walk, is the same as the object of a transitive sentence. And then the agent uh, the, of, the, of the transitive sentence takes on a, a case marker called the ergative. So it's a little bit different from um, what we are used to. All right. So in this sentence like this, Martin being the, the, the person falling, is Martin, he doesn't change. Martin is also the one that's being seen. In Basque, he doesn't change. The one that has a special suffix or special form is Maria, because she's the one doing the action. So Maria is doing something to Martin. Maria is doing something to Martin. So that, that's how an ergative absolutive language works. All right. So let's look at it again. So Martin falls. So this erotzenda is uh, a verb complex meaning to fall in the present tense. So Martin falls. Easy. Maria, Martin, and you've got, literally, you could translate an ergative sentence almost like a passive form, right? So, like, um, Martin falls, Martin is seen by Maria. You could almost say that, sorry. Martin is seen by Maria. So, this is how um, uh, Basque, things work in Basque. So, Maria, with a K, Maria, ikustendu, Martin. So, Maria... With a K is literally by Maria. Ikustendu is almost like um, it's almost like a, a passive form, a passive verb. Is seen, and Martin is Martin. So so literally by Maria, Martin is seen. So by Maria, Martin is seen. Martin uh, Maria sees Martin. So that's how they, they do it in Basque. And I th this structure is actually quite common around the world. So a very short example from Aranda, which is a language from uh, North Central Australia. In this language, the word uh, the word order is quite free. And you only know basically who's doing, doing what to whom based on the suffixes that attach themselves to the noun. So let's look at two words. You've got the word for man, which is aetua. So A-R-T-W is pronounced aetua. And we'll look at the phonology later on. And the word for to sit is anamma. Anamma. So the man sits is aetua namma. Aetua namma. Right, so that's how they say it. it it's it's uh, there's a lot of liaison in this language, a lot of uh, vowels sort of running into each other. A duan number. So the man is sitting down. Is sitting. All right. What happens when you say? If you compare these two sentences, the man is sitting. So a duan number. That's which is an intransitive sentence with a dollar amba arama. The man is looking at the child. So you see the word a duan has a la. That comes after it. That's the ergative. That's like the K in Basque, right? Exactly the same function. Amba means child. A M P E pronounced amba. And arama, arama means to look or to see. So I do lambaram. That's how you say I do lambaram. Okay, very very quickly. I do lambaram. Uh, say it ten times. Is how you say the man is looking at a child. But in 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 actual fact, it's actually man ergative, child, no marking, and then look. So something the child is looked at by the man. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is basically how an ergative language works. All right. So we'll look at more examples later on. Uh, we'll be having more videos coming over the next few weeks uh, discussing languages such as uh, Aranda, all the different st structures as well, uh, Mayan languages, as well as um, even languages like um, the, of course, uh, Simshian languages in the northwest, Pacific Northwest of the US and Canada. We'll look at those and we'll see how they differ from English and some of the more interesting aspects of learning um, a minority language, right? Because you, you, you find a lot of things that you wouldn't expect to find in a language like English or Russian or French or Chinese. So uh, until next time, bye for now.